Rama Siva, start remind. Hey guys, hope you're well and safe in lockdown wherever in the world you may be. So I wanted to ask a question. What does it take to get out of the stuttering mind? Is it techniques? Is it breathing? Is it facing the fear? What does it take? Well, for me, it's not giving a monkey's about what other people think. It's about speaking and being your authentic self. So, if that means expressing yourself and letting go and laughing at yourself, having fun and not being so damn serious. Wow, I look good with the red lipstick. I must try it out in real life. Maybe on a Saturday night. So let's get back to your point. What does it take to get out of the stuttering mind? What are you really afraid of? Are you afraid of stuttering? Are you afraid of being embarrassed? Hey, look at me with my great hairdo. Do I look as if I give a shit about my great hairdo? Hey, Praveen, how are you? You're doing a great job with the ka, count the sutta sa, challenge. Well, well done on doing fa, 40 stuttering on pa purposes. That is what it takes. Now, the next level is not giving a shit, a shit about what other people think. Let's be frank. We stutter because we care too much about other people. We are worried about what other people think. We are overly concerned. Hey Mark, how's it going? You can join me. Let me try and bring you on the camera. Our friend Barry Ricks called me a tart. Well, I'm trying to bring, can you join yourself? Can you add yourself? So, what does it take to get out of the suttering mind? Is it techniques? Is it breathing? Is it facing the fear? It is in fact not giving a shit about what other people think. Once you do, let's get Mark in. Hey Mark, uh, add. Where are you here? Where are you from, Dean? So, don't give a shit about other people's opinion. <laughs> hey Mark, how are you? Fantastic, Rama. You look lovely wearing those curlers and that lipstick, Matt. I know, I didn't know I looked so good. Wow, I need to try it on maybe on a Friday night. Uh, we lose the I signal, I'll headset. go back inside. <laughs> I, you can show this picture to your wife and say, these are your friends on Stuttering Mind. A bit crazy, but who gives a fuck about people's opinions? <laughs> because you know what? A lot of people who stutter, we hold back. We avoid. <laughs> we are so worried about other people's opinions. What do you think? Do you give a shit about other people's opinions? <laughs> You can grab your uh, wig and maybe your wife's curlers and put them on. She hasn't got a name. <laughs> Why? My wife cut my hair this week. Okay. <laughs> can you tell? Yeah, I can tell. You're, you're going with uh, grey, like me. That's what well, a lot of grey hairs up here. Yeah, yeah. So, how have things been recently? It's uh, 
well since we've spoken. Yeah, it's been a while. I met your good friends from Stellarfield. They are in the stuttering mine community, making a good name for themselves, spreading the word of starfish. Oh, Michael. Yeah, Michael. Um, Michael Wright. Michael Wright. And Ross oh, Dockaday. Oh. And there's a lad who went on the Maguire program, David Adams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all good guys. And this is what we need. We need people to expand their comfort zones, put on their curlers, put on some lipstick. <laughs> and I'll on. give that a miss. <laughs> huh? My wife might get a shock. <laughs> yeah, actually, it might along. I'd love to speak to a I speak to your lovely wife. She's Love busy you. doing uh, schoolwork. Uh, she's a, a teacher. She teaches child development and she's absolutely snowed under with work at the moment mm. uh, with exams and coursework and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, how's it going in Stevenage? What's the weather like? Uh, the weather's quite... Um... The weather's quite sunny. It was mm. a bit rainy. Mm. Sometimes change my hairdo. <laughs> how do you do it? I don't know how you do that. Uh, because I'm not as technical, logical minded as you are, Roma. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, let me go back to my outfit. Right. This is a kiss to Barry Ricks. He called me a tart. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's a pimp, right? Yeah. <laughs> when did you last speak to Barry? Oh, I spoke to him this morning and we wanted to go on to the British Tamarind Association website because it's been very quiet there. They have a habit of deleting my posts because I talk too long. I talk too Callum long. Callum Schofield said that. <laughs> Callum Schofield said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't like people talking. They want people to stammer. Yeah, I know. I know. He said that he done a two point six hour podcast um, for the raising funds, two hundred and fifty pound, and then sent him an email back to say I should have been stammering more. Uh, I just oh, can't, did oh, did they? can't understand that. I cannot it? understand it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can, uh, let me talk to Callum and ask him to share it on uh, social media. Because I want to see it. Because I should ca, 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 I can't stutter. I can't stutter. In fact, the Stammer BSA should invite me to front their publicity. And so I will edit my words because this is a <laughs> uh, child friendly Facebook group on stuttering community. So, anyway, so I um, hope you guys don't think I'm gay. Well, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with being gay. I'm just, I'm having some fun. I'm having some fun. Yeah. You know something, Rama? You. Yeah. Um, it could be the stammering version of Lily Savage. I think so, my friend. I think so. Too. I look very good, but I need to get my uh, Liverpool accent a little bit more. Uh, I'm not very good at accents. Mm. Irish. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my friend, let's get back to topic. Right, okay. So... So you, so you tell me that Callum got an email from the British Stammering Association that he did not stammer enough. He did yeah, not he stammer enough. Is yes, that from James podcast. Powell? Is that from James mm -hmm. Powell or from who? I don't know. I don't know who sent it. Callum told me yesterday. Um, no, the day before yesterday he told me about it. Okay. I was gobsmacked. I couldn't believe it, but it doesn't really surprise me. The thing is, Callum doesn't want to rock any boats because he's gone through the 
helpline situation with me and we therefore the sole reason to help people looking for advice looking for support mm. and what I've kind of found Rama um, through my time being a helpline worker with the COVID-19 situation Mm -hmm. There are quite a lot of parents falling in with young children that stammer. We're talking about children below five years old. Oh. Uh, there was a parent phoned me last week mm. with a two-year-old stammering. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is development, children learning speech. And... Sometimes when we draw attention to it too quickly, this yeah. becomes a problem. Uh, so it's a fine line. I, uh, I do find with parents working from home and doing housework, having to do various jobs, the children don't see the grandparents, relatives, they don't see their friends at nursery, parent and toddler groups, and this is going to be big. Uh, it's going to be a big problem, and I think more children will develop a stomach through it. Yeah, so you had four girls, right? I had four girls. And at any stage, did they have any stumbling repetitions, hesitating when they were two, three years of age. My eldest daughter, she started stammering uh, just for a short time. We were told to observe it, but ignore it. If you can't, don't draw attention to it, um, which with me, being at work, and my wife was mainly with her most of the time. I didn't have a lot of contact. When I got in from work after six oh, yeah. o'clock, it was really ready for going to bed. Um, yeah, so kind of look at it now. Roughly around that time, I went on the uh, Andrew Bell course for the second time to... Oh, you went on the Andrew Bell course as well? Twice. Mm. Twice? Twice. The wow. first time when I was 16. Lucky you, huh? And look, eh, and the second time I must have been about, how old would have been then? I think it was either 16 or 18 years later, Rama, and my sole intention for going back was to try and help my children not stammer. And how old were they at that time when you went back? Jessica uh, must have been around six year old. Uh, Charlotte would have been about four year old and my twin daughters too, but Jessica had lost her stomach, and Charlotte, there was no and how stomach. Old, in, in. And how old was Jessica, the eldest, when she lost the stutter? Um, it, it didn't last long. I would say about two and a half year old, but like I say, my fear was such as my twin daughters developing it, or my middle daughter. It was a, that age group. Eh? So my speech, uh, my stammer was still very strong at the time. The kids pick up on it, parent. Myself, I've got this belief where I don't, I don't always think it's a, genetic thing. To me, I, the kids pick up on the parents. So if a parent is stammering, a child can stammer. Maybe the breathing isn't right. Maybe their 
child copies and it starts to, to catch. And speech pathologists have, have kind of come away from that route, from that direction, and they've more or less said, yeah, it's a neurological condition, it's genetic. And me and Callum have spoken about this. And you can change your mindset. And you will agree with this, won't you? Yeah, you can change your mindset. And if you want to say, in occasional dysfluency, you want to break down your stomach, this is your choice. And the stammer's routinely per put in occasional dysfluency. Yeah, I'm coming across as a person who's working on his speech. I'm coming across as a person who has a stammer or some sort of speech impediment. But but this is me, me as a person. The stammer is only a, a small part of me. Mm. Okay, so if I want to promote it, that is my choice. If I want, if I'm feeling a little bit of doubt or a little bit of apprehension on saying something, I'll slow everything down. I'll be more conscious with my breathing, but I won't avoid nothing. Even if I, I think there's a little bit of doubt in my mind on this particular word, I still go for it. And whether I stammer or not, it doesn't make any difference. So I'm now, and my mindset is totally different now compared to what it used to be. Yeah, so um, when you went back to Andrew Bell, what the, mm. did you learn from Andrew Bell? The techniques had changed slightly. I, I phoned up to do a course. I'd been on it when I was 16 years old. Yeah. And this was my first speech therapy since I was in primary school. So it had been quite a gap. Yeah. I was starting work. Well, I'd started work, actually, and I was still struggling with my speech. I can mm. always remember my first day at work. Sixty people were there, young lads like myself, learning various trades. We were apprentices. Mm -hmm. And we had to get up and say our names and what our particular to be. And that was horrendous. Uh, Forty no, mm. well, 59 people looking at me, trying to say my name and trying to say Apprentice Boilermaker. And this took me a long time and I went and sat back down. So uh, roughly about six months later was when I went on the Handro Him. Okay. I still had to pay the full course fees. So, mm -hmm. uh, because I'd gone on a, a course before, it didn't make any difference. I still had to pay the full fee. The mm -hmm. techniques changed slightly. The speech had got kind of faster. Uh, you worked with slight nod and head movement. So my first course, if I told you my name, mm -hmm. my no, it was a sideways movement. Yeah, my, you know, my name. So that's what. Is Mark what Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, and gradually it speeded up. So Mark. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah. and you know, it's going like this. Yeah, so. Yeah. Where's your first day video from there? Well, I phoned him. 
when I went on Starfish yeah, yeah. to send me my video. Yeah. And he said he didn't keep videos. And I thought, that's a bit strange. Why don't you keep videos? Because if someone got in difficulty yeah. with the speech or someone lapsed, you yeah. would need to access what their speech was like. All right now, and I, I found it strange, but what he started to do while I was speaking to him, I didn't mention starfish, I didn't mention I'd been on a course, but, but he would have noticed with the costal breath what but, I was using. Yeah. But did he speak better than Andrew Bell? No, I spoke well, eh? He, he did speak well, eh? Okay. Uh, very stout accent, Scottish accent, with a little dicky bow tie and that. It was, to tell the, the truth, it, it gave me something, Rama, it gave me a direction. All right, it might, some the people might uh, uh, said he was a charlatan, but he still gave me the direction where to take my speech. What did he give for you? Pardon? What did he give for you? Direction. Yeah. What so I knew that I could actually do something with my speech. The lack of support following the course let me down. Basically, you were encouraged to ring up the people that were on that course. Some people like myself might have been on it beforehand, but we weren't supposed to talk about it. It was a taboo, so it was a disguise. We couldn't be open with, with our history. And is, uh, is to me, Bell, it wasn't right, huh? Is Mr. Bell still uh, alive? Oh, I don't know. He'll be about, he'll be a good age now. Okay. He'll be a good age. He went into sports science. You know, like, uh, oh, what do I call the guy? Steve Peters, Dr. Steve Peters. Something similar that works with Football teams, athletes, sports stars, money. <laughs> yeah, good for him. So, mm -hmm. so your children did not stutter, or they don't stutter. My children don't stutter now. And what did you do with the eldest child who started to stumble? You just ignored it. You just let her speak. Let her speak. Let it um, nurture her, so listen to her, don't rush her, uh, maintain high contact whenever we spoke. One thing I couldn't do, I couldn't read a story from a book, I uh, used to really uh, find reading difficult, so I could make up stories. I could imagine stories, choose words, what I could say. And, uh, but my children still knew I stammered, but I tried not to stammer around them. I tried and it was harder, but it was difficult. I did have to try and control my stammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you another question. Okay. Now, we are fairly long into the journey of our stuttering, our minds, and our mindset. Yeah. There are other people who are starting, but when people like us, we give them suggestions, they take it personally, and they find it offensive. Now, as a person who stutters, your experience is 
much more valuable than a person who has never started before. Yeah. I can see that you have walked in my shoes. You have started in my shoes. Mm -hmm. You have lived with a starting life for X amount of years. But now you have come to a point where you speak like my friend Barry Ricks, the pimp. Um, I'm sure he doesn't mind me calling him a pimp. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll have to get, get back my... Wig, come. Uh, your lipstick. So, okay. So, um, because we, you have effortless speech. You don't think about it. You just breathe and you speak. Mm. Correct? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, what did you do to get to the point of effortless speech? What were the steps that you took? <laughs> Techniques first. The techniques what I use based on breathing, relaxation, having that willingness to desensitize my speech, your speech tools. And how do you relax, sliding? How do you, how do you desensitize yourself? What do you do? To desensitize myself, be open with who I am. And how are you open with who you are? How are you open? What do you do? We talk about stammering, we talk about. Oh, really? We just oh, really? You talk about generalize stammer? things. Hmm? You talk yeah. about stammer. generalize things. Oh, yeah. I want to disguise stammering. Uh, Stammering is there, all right? So why d disguise something that is there? And yes. this is, going back, my speech w went from covert to covert, due to embarrassment, frustration, shame, fear. Quite a, quite a lot of words. And what I could describe how I felt when my stammer had so much strength. So if you imagine, right, you're, you're a race horse, right? You have to go through so many races before you're fit enough or you're good enough to compete in the Grand National. So mm -hmm. this is the Grand National. Now on Facebook Live on Star Trek community. Hey guys, if you're watching, please say hi to us. Uh, we can't see who you who you are. Just write hi in the comments and we'll give you a shout. Hey William, yes, you can sing all, all day long. Sing if you want to. Hey, hey Mark, if you started and you didn't start when you sang, would mm -hmm. you have sang? Would you sang? Would you say? Well, I can't sing. I'm not a good singer, but I can yeah. sing without. Yeah, going back, I could sing, so there was nothing wrong with my vocal cords. There was nothing wrong yeah. with my yeah. breathing. Yeah. So tell me. So people say when you sing, you're using a different part of the brain. Okay, that's what the neuroscientists mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. That's what the people, the brain people say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can use the same tonality, the same expressiveness when you are speaking as if you're singing, then surely you are liberated. It's, it's exactly like me putting on mm -hmm. yeah. the wig and the curlers, just being free, you know? So mm -hmm. why do you think people who stutter are so worried about the opinions of other people? people, why do they give a shit about other people's opinions? Well, I think it's a ingrained habit. Ingrained habit. Develop a habit. Yeah, it's a ha habit. It's touching habits. 
they so-called experts can tell me, yeah, my brain isn't right, I've, I've faulty wiring, the right hemisphere, the left hemisphere. Um, but if I go on believing things like that, that just brainwashes me. Exactly. Um, reading from that scripture, and it isn't right. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. But to me, they've got qualifications of all this research. You sort of think about it, and myself and Callum were talking about this. Centuries ago, where remedies were putting snakes inside your mouth, cutting the muscle below your tongue, splitting your tongue in two, putting yeah. marbles in your mouth. Now, these were experts telling you to do this. And now, how many people died through putting a snake in the mouth how many people choked on marbles and whatever else they come out with. So now we've got to the stage, everyone is singing, yeah, it's neurological. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so long ago, it was a learned behavior. Yeah, I mean, uh, whatever the causes may be, the fact of the matter is that with your mindset, with mm -hmm. your belief, with your determination, you can choose to have effortless speech and speak. I mean, the way that I speak now is mm -hmm. different from the way I spoke four years ago. Mm -hmm. Different yeah. from the way I spoke ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's a journey. You can't expect to go on a three-day online course with an no. expensive Russian <clears throat> tutor whose name won't be mentioned ever. Oh, oh she charges? I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, well, there you are. That's news to you. Right. <laughs> That's news. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. I... I I thought it was a free service, but no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think uh, there's such a word free in rubles. The right, okay. Dollars. Maybe it's free rubles, which isn't worth much uh, sense, but mm -hmm. uh, they charge a good uh, whacking dollars. All oh, right, right. Yeah, um, I mean, I've had people contacting me, whining, saying, oh, I, got, took, a, I took a loan. I took a loan to go on that Russian course. Why would you take a loan and do that course without doing any research, number one? Mm -hmm. Number two, starfish costs 250 which is about $300. And they have a good basic stuff. Gives you direction. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, it's like tools. About, mm -hmm. What I like about Callum and Faison is that they are pushing their limits. Doing a podcast, mm -hmm. raising funds for a charity, which is a waste of time. Mm. <laughs> and, and, um, we won't have, go there, eh? <laughs> well, it's not being, it's not being uh, posted on their group, because if it was, our post would be deleted for being longer than 10 minutes. And, not, <laughs> and we're not standing that. Or maybe, or maybe you should go back onto the PSA and stand up for 10 minutes and then cut the, cut the call. Shall we do that? I think I'm getting tired of being on the <laughs> Are you free now? Or do you have a dog to walk? <laughs> hey, uh, you come out with some pearlers. <laughs> let, let, let. Let's go to the BSA uh, Facebook page and do some stuttering. Yeah, let's do some weird stuttering. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. realistically, yeah. now yeah. you can't post nothing which doesn't doesn't include stammering. 
Så, ja. så vi ska man. Med fantastisk progress in your life, but if you if you not stammering and struggling and finding things difficult, eh? And finding things difficult, that's not acceptable. Okay. But I, so let's to me it's let's open progress. It's open progress. <laughs> let's go on the edge, like our friend Colin Firth in the King's Speech. Let's become Colin Firth and let's go and act on the BSA. Yeah, I'll see you there. Okay, mate? Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't leave me hanging, okay? I'm going to be there now. Don't leave me hanging, okay? <laughs> okay, you're coming on now. Coming on now. Right, ciao. Right, okay, mate. Thanks for watching on Stuttering Community. If you're on BSA, British Stuttering Association, watch us stutter for 10 minutes before we get cut off. <laughs> Thanks, Bye for now. Bye-bye.